hello guys welcome to my youtube channel so today we are going to discuss blue white screening now this screening test is one of the most important test in recombinant dna technology or genetic engineering all right so this test is used to screen recombinants from the non recombinant ones so first i have divided this video into two parts first we will see the molecular biology behind blue white screening and later on we will focus into the steps of how blue white screening is done so now if i draw the structure of lac operon gene of e coli all right so this is the lac operon gene that is present in e coli so at the very first end you will have a promoter so the p here this p stands for promoter and adjacent to promoter is the operator region and then you have the three structural genes lac z lac y lac a i am not going into the details of lac operon because that is a separate thing in that is a separate topic so one thing if you know this lac z gene all right so this lac z gene that is present in e coli lac operon this lac z gene is very important because it codes one of the most important enzymes which is beta galactosidase all right now what does this enzyme do it helps in the uh, breakdown of lactose all right now this beta galactosidase is actually coded into two separate parts one is the c terminal fragment which is the omega fragment and the other is the n terminal fragment which is the alpha fragment both these two fragments are non functional only when omega fragment combines with alpha fragment then the combined structure becomes a functional beta galactosidase enzyme so both these two parts are non functional by themselves but only when these two parts combine then only you get a functional beta galactosidase now if i in the media if i add a substrate which is exgal then this beta galactosidase will react with the exgal to form a blue colored compound which is this one 5 5 prime dibromo 4 4 prime dichloro indigo so this compound that is formed as a reaction between the exgal substrate and the beta galactosidase enzyme is blue in color now this color blue is formed only because the e coli lac operon gene is synthesizing beta galactosidase enzyme if by somehow the beta galactosidase synthesis had been stopped then this blue color formation would also be been stopped so suppose in while manipulating the dna if i insert my gene of interest all right so if i insert my gene of interest in this position in the lag z position all right so what will happen as a result the foreign dna is now inserted in the lag z position so no beta galactosidase formation would happen and if no beta galactosidase formation happens this reaction exgal reaction with beta galactosidase will not happen and as a result no blue color formation will happen all right so this is how we manipulate we insert our gene of interest at the lag z position such that beta galactosidase formation does not happen and as a result exgal is not converted into this blue colored compound all right so Some, sometimes we also use iptg which is an inducer now what i have told you is those colonies bacterial colonies which give blue color are actually non recombinant colonies why because that lac z gene are intact in that case and those colonies in which we have manipulated the gene that is we have inserted our gene of interest into the lac z position those are actually recombinant colonies so they won't be able to give blue color so those colonies will be white colored so in blue white screening blue color colonies are those which are non recombinant ones and white colored colonies are those which are recombinant ones so blue color colonies have the lag z gene intact and white color colonies have the lag z position manipulated or inserted by our gene of interest now if you look how it looks like here i have shown a plate where these are the white color colonies as you see these are the recombinant colonies and here some blue color colonies are also there these are the non recombinant colonies so in this way we can distinguish between the recombinants and the non recombinants now let us take a plasmid vector 
Okay, so this deep blue portion of the plasma detector is the ampicillin resistance gene which is used as a selectable marker and here you have the NCS or multiple cloning sites where you have a number of restriction sites for a large number of restriction enzymes and this light blue portion is the lag Z gene present in this plasma detector. This lag Z gene which uh, will code for the enzyme beta galactosidase. Alright, now there are three possible cases. Okay. This image that I have taken is available on the internet. This image is a very good image to clear the concept of plasmid vector. I will uh, give the reference of this image in my description box as well. So, if you take a plasmid vector like the like the one I showed in the previous slide. So, this blue colored region was the ampicillin resistance gene if you remember. So, this is the um, selectable marker gene on the ampicillin resistance gene. And this light blue color region, this is the position of the lag Z gene which will code for the enzyme beta galactosidase. So, this is our plasmid vector and this this is our foreign DNA or the, our gene of interest. Alright. So, this brown color DNA that they have shown is our foreign DNA gene and or our gene of interest. Now, if you cut the plasmid vector and the foreign DNA with the same restriction enzyme and thereafter if you ligate both of them you will get recombinant DNA. Now there are three possible cases. The foreign DNA may insert within the lag Z gene. So this is our first case. That means the foreign DNA or the gene of interest can get inserted within the lag Z gene. If it so happens then because the gene of interest has been inserted in the lag Z gene no beta galactosidase formation will happen because the lag Z gene is no more intact. So these types of bacterial colonies will be white color. Okay. So these are actually the recombinant colonies that we had been looking for. Alright. So in the first case we will get recombinant colonies or white colonies because the lag Z gene is no more intact. Alright. Now there can be a second case. What can be the second case? Suppose the gene of interest has been inserted within the plasmid vector but it has been inserted somehow outside the lag Z gene. Okay, it has been inserted within the plasmid vector but outside the lag Z gene. So this is the gene of interest that has been inserted in the plasmid vector and but outside the lag Z gene. So in this case our lag Z gene is intact. So if our lag Z gene is intact it will poor functional beta galactosidase so then we will get blue color colonies so although the gene of interest has been uh, inserted into the plasmid vector still we are getting blue color colonies so these types of colonies are not desired these are undesired colonies and the third case that can be possible is that no insert that means the gene of interest does not get inserted within the plasmid vector so in this case also we have a functional lag Z gene so it will go for functional beta galactosidase and in this case also we will get blue colonies alright so these are non recombinant ones now why I showed you this picture is some competitive exams do ask that when we will you get blue colonies and students write that when we will get when the lag Z gene will be in that. So that is why I showed you that you can get blue color colonies in two cases. First is when the insert is the gene of interest has been inserted but it may not be in the right place. Okay. Say for example outside the lag Z gene then also you are getting the blue color colonies. Although the gene of interest is within your plasmid vector but still you are getting blue color colonies because the lag Z gene is intact. And the second case that you know is when the gene of interest has not been inserted within the plasmid vector. In that case also you are getting blue color colonies. So there are two possible cases where you can get blue color colonies. And only one case where you will get white color colonies. Okay, so these white color colonies are the desired colonies. Now the white color we can separately collect white color colonies from the blue color colonies from the plate by another method called as a replica plating. That I will explain it in a separate video.